Welcome to the Wedding Business Growth Coach Podcast, a podcast dedicated to sharing everything you need in bite-sized episodes to set up your wedding business for success and get your diary fully booked, full of those dream wedding clients. You're here with me, Jen Maynard, Wedding Business Growth Coach and founder of the Boho Bride Guide Wedding Blog and Supply Directory. Each episode is full of value and structured around my Wedding Business Anchor Fundamentals Framework to give you straightforward, step-by-step activities to put in place into your business that will position yourself as the go-to wedding supplier within your specialism. Let's go! Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of the podcast. I am so excited to have you with me today. Let's get straight into it. So this week, we are looking more around how to build a wedding business brand rather than just a business. Now I'm going to explain all. So in this episode, we're going to be covering um, looking at your wedding business brand and how your purpose can help you shape what your brand looks like. We're going to look at firstly, what is a brand um, and the benefits of building one. And we're going to look at building a brand where connection is the new currency. So number one, what is a wedding business brand? So simply put, a brand is a way of identifying your business, how your customers recognize and experience your business. So it's very much more than just, you know, a nice looking logo and brand guidelines. It is a feeling, it is a style, it is an ethos and a belief that upholds what your business stands for. And I very much think authenticity comes into this. If I have learned anything from the last 10 years in um, the corporate world, imposter syndrome and being feeling like I'm a fraud within the jobs that I have uh, taken part in within my career. I was very, you know, on the top of my agenda was when I was building my wedding businesses, authenticity, authenticity was the top of my list. I wanted to build a wedding business where I felt completely at ease, completely authentic to myself. There was no mask or pretense that I felt that I had to be something that I didn't feel like I was underneath. Um, And ultimately I wanted a space to be work within an environment where I felt that I am enough and this is me and this is what I can offer you. And it's okay if it's not for you, but I have a community that this is enough for and I am enough. Yeah, and just somewhere that I can very much speak from the heart um, and just be me. It sounds so simple, but yeah, when you think you should be in a place where, where you should be working at a certain level and you don't feel like you're speaking from the heart, you don't feel passionate about what you do, it really, that misalignment actually really can affect your, your sort of mental well-being over the long run. So yeah, that was really important. And actually, when we build a brand, authenticity should be at the top of our agenda. Because, you know, we spoke about it before, people don't buy from business, a business, a company. They buy from people. They buy from people that they aspire either to be or they they connect with they resonate with they they feel like they they have something um, in common with that person with that brand um, whether that's aspirational or whether they can resonate with that and so when we are building a brand it is essential that we put us at the forefront and that our business aligns with who we are as people what we stand for what we believe in what is important to us what we are passionate about as when our brand doesn't align with what or who we are as as uh, the business owner we as humans can quickly we sort of have a sixth sense around picking up when a business doesn't really align with the person that is trying to um, portray this image. We, we can quickly sniff out people that are 
um unauthentic if that's the word um and yeah that that it doesn't align basically there's a misalignment with the person that's talking um and what they're talking about so yeah it's about taking a pause and thinking right does my business align with who i am first and foremost so building a brand where connection is the new currency. And I've got a few stats for you from Sprout Social online. Um, and they, they did a bit of a, a survey to their consumers and, and they quickly learned that their consumers and people generally that are purchasing from brands, they don't just want that transactional um, experience. You know, I'll buy that full stop they are looking to to grow that online relationship before they make that purchase and they want that connection uh 66 percent of uh, people they surveyed wanted a feeling of trust that they could trust that brand 53 percent um they wanted the brand to align with their values so a brand needs to display what their values are throughout that needs to be the golden thread throughout what they are portraying online um, and each touch point they have with their uh, potential client 51 percent wants brands to understand them and their wants they they want to feel like yeah they get me they know exactly what i need they know exactly what i'm looking for for my wedding day um and that you know over half wanted that from a brand and over 50 percent wanted brands or they they depend on brands services and products that they offer uh, because they've got to that point where they want yeah no i need that brand and i need them to do a, that specific thing for my wedding day it's it's become a want rather than just an essential need or sort of a transactional i'll choose them for their price point so how do we build a wedding brand rather than just a wedding business so a brand is so much more than a well-designed logo or brand guidelines, as I mentioned. And a business brand should authentically reflect its purpose. Now, the word purpose is through when we're thinking about building a brand, purpose needs to be at the forefront of our minds. So it's purpose and authenticity. Uh, beyond you know, the brand style, its products and services, um, the, the brand reflects a higher purpose. Um, and a higher, you know, what, what is the ethos behind this business? Um, and that is portrayed through our brand. I've got a few examples. Now, I'm not brilliant at knowing a lot of famous people, so I do apologise. <laughs> these are the th people that came into my mind. And actually, most of these, a lot of these things have been influenced by books I've read or things like that, rather than uh, social media because I don't actually scroll social media personally other than from from a business point of view so my first one is David Attenborough okay so take a moment when I say David Attenborough what is David's brand what what words or phrases are conjured up when I say his name now I came up with when I think of David Attenborough because I think he's an absolute legend and I love everything that he stands for. But some things that came into my mind, an expert within his field, a lifelong dedication to his cause. And a very much like a climate activist and a, a world renowned activist in his in his space. And just is a genuine sort of lovable, authentic and passionate person. And, and actually. I probably am drawn to David, not just by the way he presents, you know, he's got he's got the most beautiful voice, if you ask me, but it's not about that. It's about the person behind his brand that I have sort of fallen in love with. <laughs> um, another one I, I picked up was who, when I say now the, I got to know this um, brand uh, from social media. Who gives a crap? Now, I'm hoping you might know what they do, but 
when I think of who gives a crap and I, I, um, yeah, came to know them via social media, things that come into my mind from the, what they portray online, fun, they're a worthy cause, sustainable um, business that are trying to change um, attitudes around waste and how we look after our earth. They're another climate activist and they are, their products are tangible to many. Um, it's just about them sharing the benefits of if people do a simple swap to their, to their product, what that means for our earth and making a difference. Those things initially come up to me. Another person, um, so a person brand, if you like, is Michelle Obama. What, what comes to your mind when I say Michelle Obama? For me, I've got inspirational, an amazing mom and, um, and how she represents being a mom. Um, I, I have the utmost respect for her. Um, her resilience her and how she impacts lives for the better. Another one, the shoe brand Toms. Now, um, for me, they're an iconic slip on shoe. You know, they're, they're trendy, they're, they're, they're uh, fashionable. But behind that, there is so much more to just their shoe. You know, they're a sustainable vegan footwear company. Um, and every pair bought, um, you know, in the shops by the consumer, a child in need is given a pair of new shoes. Um, and for, uh, yeah, and they're just stylish and uh, the cool kids tend to wear them, I think, if I'm still in the, in the zone there. <laughs> um, and then the last one I've got here is Chanel. When I say Chanel, what comes to your mind? For me, it's the height of luxury. It's an aspirational purchase um, for, for some or for many. It's very much an iconic brand right up there with, um, you know, the world renowned. Everyone has heard of Chanel and very much classic. So, you know, their, their products that you buy, they, they don't date their, them they're sort of a, a almost a lifetime investment opportunity when you purchase their handbag for example and their mission statement I picked up uh, just to give you a what so that's what I get from thinking about Chanel um, their mission statement is to be the ultimate house of luxury defining style and creating desire now and forever now a purpose when we're thinking about our own brands, it doesn't have to mean what sort of externally um, we want to support from, a, you know, whether it's um, climate change or that sort of thing. It's, although it can be, it can very much be part of your brand, um, but it's really clarifying what your ultimate purpose is um, of your business and then reflecting this in everything you do um, sort of your the golden thread throughout your um, your business marketing now I found um, or by reading a book I will show you this one this is um, build a brand in 30 days by Simon Middleton um, and he clarifies eight really useful building blocks when it comes to building a brand with purpose and that has purpose as like the, the cornerstone of that brand. And each of the eight building blocks are interdependent. So they're equally as important as the next. Um, and I've just numbered them to sort of keep, keep abreast of them. Um, so the number one is ambition and desire. So from your wedding business brand, what do you personally want to get from this venture? Now, I think this is really important because, you know, when we think about a brand, we, we very, or I can be easily swayed to thinking about, okay, what does it look like from the other, other side? What, what do people perceive? But actually we also need to recognize what this business brand means for us and sort of tap into our heart and soul about reminding us why we're doing this and and reflecting that in our um, messaging that that goes out into the world why we do we need this because we're human and I think 
when we know why we're doing something, other people want to hear why we're doing it um, because they can resonate with that as well. So not only do they want to know what benefits they can get from maybe working with you or buying your, your products, they want to know why you are doing it. And so have a think. So there's a few elements. What are your emotional needs when it comes to building this business brand? What personal fulfillment do you want to get from this brand? What material desires do you want to be um, aspiring to? And what financial aspirations? Now, I've done um, a few examples here. So for myself, my emotional needs from both Wedding Business Growth Coach and uh, the Boho Bride Guide, it enables me emotionally to be a present mom. Um, I am my own boss. I can dictate when I work, how I work, and prioritize ultimately my family first. And as well, emotional needs wise, I want to be part of a community. I need people around me. I need to feel like I am helping a community. I am contributing to something bigger than just myself. Personal fulfillment, this sort of overlaps. For me, um, I want to make a difference. I want to leave a legacy of enabling others to succeed. And that is something that I hold really um, hot, gosh, close to my heart. I'm very much a people pleaser and I need, like I mentioned, I need to be surrounded by people and making a difference to their everyday life um, because that makes me happy. Um, material desires, for me, I, I want to be taking my family around the world. I want them to experience different cultures, different experiences from, from, yeah, from a travel point of view, I think travel can widen horizons, can can put things into perspective, can yeah, get widen the um, imagination and ambition, um, and I think that can only be a good thing. And for me, my businesses will enable me to travel with my boys, with my family and friends. And the fourth one, financial aspirations. So for me, I want to be to feel financially stable where I'm able to, um, you know, invest uh, money for the future for my boys. Um, but also, yeah, to have to make memories to to um, to not have any sort of money worries or that um, or concerns. I think as as you gain um, financial or um, yeah, when as you gain up or go up the financial ladder, if you like, I think there's always financial worries and concerns in different ways. But for me, I th I think having yeah, being financially secure and being able to invest for the future that's really important to me. Okay, that's number one, ambition and desire. Number two is called talent. Now this is very much around when we're building a um, brand, we need to achieve the sort of, you know, clarify what that purpose is. And to be able to achieve what we see our brand as being, we need to be honest and have an honest conversation with ourselves about where we are currently at um, from a brand point of view and how our um, potential customers are portraying us I suppose so where are the sort of skills and ability gaps and capacity gaps within your business at present and you know so what what knowledge gaps do you have to setting up your wedding business for success what personal development do you need to consider um, to sort of to close that gap what external help or support can you consider that will enable you to sort of take a chunk of the business development and actually give it to somebody else that can do a better job, do it quicker than you, um, and actually enable you to focus on the elements that you are good at, that you are in your zone of genius, as they say. 
Um, so does, and ultimately with the business that you have chosen, does it really align with your abilities, with your interests and passions? Have you chosen the, this area of business for the right reasons? Um, and, you know, the areas that we need to be sort of have an honest conversation about is are, do, do we have enough skill set to be the founder of this wedding business and are there other areas that we could potentially outsource okay number three the next one is called rational intent so as well as holding ambitions and sort of goals around building a wedding business brand we need a healthy dose of rational intent and this is really having an honest, another honest conversation with yourself to, to decide, yes, we ought to do this. We ought to do that. We ought to do X, Y, and Z, but actually what am I going to do? And so for this one, I love the, when, when I'm working with someone, when I'm coaching them through, um, yeah, goal setting, let's say, for example, I always use when they, when they've, think they've decided what needs to be done next almost like that list I then ask them okay for each one of them on a scale of one to ten how how likely is it that you are going to complete this task in that said deadline time scale that you set yourself and actually it really highlights then okay so say you say okay it's a seven OK, so you're saying that it's a seven and that we need we, this needs to be done to build your brand. What would get that to an eight? What do you need to put in place to get that rational intent to a number eight? And that just really helps you clarify. Yeah, where, where you're at with what you need to do and actually what barriers might be in place to actually get you to do it <laughs> and it's that and it's clarifying those dreams what I ought to do to actually the doing what needs to be done and, and when you're going to do it and how you're going to do it the practicalities number four is values so to build a brand a wedding business brand your values are an intrinsic part of this process and your values really are where you, there is no compromise for you when you when working in your wedding business. Um, what principles, what concepts and what is your ethos around how you work and what what you do for your clients? It's basically your non-negotiables. You know, what what are your non-negotiables when it comes to uh, building this wedding business brand? And values enable brands to be authentic to you as a wedding business owner. And, and it sets you apart from um, your um, competitors within the same wedding niche. You know, so it enables you to be distinct, compelling um, to your target wedding audience. Now, I wrote down what mine were just to give you a bit of a flavor, an example of what non-negotiables could look like. So number one, my first value or non-negotiable um, is the power of authenticity. And I've already mentioned it in this podcast, but due to that whole not feeling authentic for so long within my um, professional career, that is really important to me. So when I work with clients, when I work with wedding suppliers, when I when I do group coaching, it's, you know, I, I'm put aspects in place where to make sure that people are able to feel authentic that are able to feel that they can be exactly themselves to be open and honest about where they're at in their wedding business and maybe where they're at within that coaching program or course um, and have steps in place that they they can reach out at any point to um, ask for help if if that's the area for example you are worthy. Now that for me is major, you know, from the wedding business brand, um, the wedding business growth coach, my brand. I want people to feel like they are worthy if they could, 
they put in the work, they are able to create a wedding business that is totally authentic to themselves and that they are able to achieve their version of success to live their best life full stop. That is, you know, they are in the right place if that is how they want to feel and end up once they've worked with me. Within that as well, very much what is important to me is actually people feeling heard and their voice is again worthy I suppose it's all on the same lines but again so many people don't have a voice or they don't feel like they have a voice in the space that they they are and it's by the wedding business growth coach is all around actually finding that voice and feeling like yes i i have the stage and i i am entitled to be on this virtual stage and share what i'm all about and grow that confidence to to share your voice and share what is important to you number two for me is enabling prosperity so Firstly, for wedding business owners, that sort of feeling of fulfillment, feeling alive, um, building that confidence and feeling on purpose. All of the work that I do from my podcast, through my courses and coaching, that is at the utmost importance to me. Um, Life is so short. And if you don't feel on purpose, if you don't feel fulfilled, you need to you need to take a rain check and take a pause because um we've all we've all been there we've all gone down journeys that we we don't feel like that and i as a business want to enable fit people to feel those things there's also a wider context to my enabling prosperity so when you think about it what is the ripple effect of creating successful wedding business owners in their field? That has a massive ripple effect from, you know, um, financially stable families, um, creating independence financially and confidence wise um, that, you know, that then again ripples into society and breaking that sort of deprivation ceiling that that people may feel that they're in by starting their own business they've been so brave to take that leap of faith I want to enable them to get to their version of success and actually make it work for what their own lives look like whether that's family friends um yeah life's too short we need to get and be fulfilled in what we do every day and what better place to be spending that than in the wedding industry what else have I written the last part of that actually was okay so what other benefits are there of creating successful small business owners it's actually creating more role models for um people that might be just starting out or a few steps behind them to cheer them along to to cheerlead them on and actually it's evidence to people that are being brave and starting small businesses that actually it can be done they're doing it over there and that's where I'm going to be in one two three years time for example number four from my values points of view and what my non-negotiables are is the power of persistence and perseverance Um, and that sort of consistency that if you are willing to put in the work um, as a wedding business owner you are able to build a business that truly enables you to be fulfilled that is flexible to your um, work-life balance and ultimately to enable you to live your best life Um, and I hope sharing my values and um, has sort of prompted some some hopefully light bulb moments about what your values are if you haven't yet um, clarified them or written them down as such and values are very much they evolve with us I think you know um, I if I wrote that six months ago they would be slightly different and we're always honing in and refocusing our attention on what is important to us that is absolutely fine we are humans we evolve with with time um, and so should our businesses 
Okay, so going back to those eight building blocks, number five is context. So we, we don't build wedding businesses in a standalone vacuum as such. We are very much impacted by you know, what's going on in the world, what's going on um, in society, trends, those sorts of things. Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what we need to be aware of is how that ex those external factors will influence us and how we build our brand. So things like, like I mentioned, the political area, the, he the pandemic, for example, um, what are the wedding vendors are doing within your wedding category and wedding niche? Um, and also what we need to be aware of what, not just our um, other vendors within our category, we need to be aware of what else is taking the attention of our target wedding audience um, that might not be so obvious at the time. But things like um, geography, things might be happening in your area on, on a wedding um, specialism basis. It might be political, like I mentioned, COVID, um, historical sort of factors that might affect the context and how your business sits within this context. Um, so for an example, um, if you own a wedding glamping site and you've just come through COVID, uh, you may have found in the last 18 months that lots of other glamping sites have popped up because stay, staycations have been the thing um, and people are taking that opportunity. But the question is, when we think about context, is what sets you apart from others um what's your differentiator in um your wedding niche um and that might be that you know there might be other glamping sites but you are the own or you are one of few that um provides uh, space to hold micro weddings um or if you don't yet is that an opportunity that you can look at um, and what sets you apart from the rest of those glamping um sites might be that you're more established, that you've got more facilities, more things going on on your site, for example. But it's it's this having this conscious thought and how you position yourself as a brand um, to differentiate yourself from others in your field. Uh, example two, um, as a, if you're a wedding celebrant, um, you are currently competing not just with wedding celebrants, but it would be. Um, registrars for the attention of your target wedding audience um, but actually if the political or legislation um, agenda changes and um, you are given the authority to um, legally sort of con conduct the registration of marriages that um, competition that competing for attention will no longer be the case because you'll be able to do the registration element as well as the ceremony um, and and it's worth constantly keeping this in mind about you know what is happening on the wider world agenda that can affect your business and, and actually seeing the opportunity in that so you know if um, you know it's finding how you differentiate yourself from for example other celebrants and that's about niching down about honing in on who your target wedding audience is and really getting into the nooks and crannies about how you serve that specific wedding community so deciding on your business brand will heavily impact um or be impacted by the wider context about what is happening in the world Okay, number six is around creation and imagination. So in the book, Simon uh, Middleton talks about reminding ourselves that brands are never built on numbers alone. So it's never as simple as sit thinking, right, there's a gap over there um, and I'm going to fill it and I'm going to be more effective and I'm going to be more cost effective um, to the current market kind of thing yeah it's worth having that thought but it's never as simple as that it's never what happens because you know the complex 
how uh, how complex our sort of economic and social worlds are and ultimately we're human so we have preferences we have favorites etc um for example okay on tv there is oodles of channels that you can choose from there are um, oodles of programs and shows that you um, have preferences for favorites um, you don't hear channel four saying oh there's masses of uh, period dramas we're not gonna we're not gonna go into that market yeah, there's you know there's no call for it because it, the the market's saturated no it doesn't really work like that does it um, there is room for everyone um, and it's important around using our creativity and our imagination to sort of explore and develop how our brand or how we want our brand to be set apart from others within our general wedding category. Um, and the book mentions, actually, I wrote it down, um, a quote. So never put a limit on your ambition and imagination for there will be plenty of people who will try to do that for you. And I couldn't agree more. There are enough naysayers out there that we don't need to be that naysayer as well. So um, let your imagination run wild and um, yeah, just go for it. Number seven, narrative. So this, uh, this is a brand uh, building block that is really, really powerful. Narrative is the story that your brand tells um, and it invites your audience to resonate with you, to chat um, and you are, what's the word, enabling them to challenge their sort of perception and current thinking and you want to inspire their thought process. Telling stories and telling your story and what you stand for, what you are all about, people just, that they connect on that additional level rather than just looking at, you know, your product page on your website, for example. Um, ultimately, your target wedding audience are sort of want to engage with you and become part of your community and hopefully your customer, your client. And without a narrative, without a story, you are missing a massive chunk of that human connection. Um, people choose you due to your brand narrative um, and what you stand for. So um, if anything, start with your brand story. I think that is such a powerful and important part of the journey to building um, your wedding brand. Two more to go. Oh, I've lost me seven. Oh, no, that was seven. <laughs> Number eight, resources. So to build a brand, another element you need to um, take into account and work on is your resources. So these are both physical and intangible. So the obvious resources sort of at where our brains go to first are the physical resources. So do you have enough money to establish your wedding business and, and where can you find those funds? Where can you um, dip into to, to start up basically have you got a workspace I, have you got the materials and the ability to access those materials and equipment but as a brand builder we very much need a lot of intangible um, resources to get our brand established these are things like headspace <laughs> something i don't have much of at the moment with uh, some poorly boys at home but um it's so important to make time to have head that headspace to work on your business rather than scurrying around and working in our business, which is another really important bit we need to do. But we need to make sure we have time to work on our business, to process ideas, to research and sort of explore the, the possibilities around where we can go next with our business. Um, we need that resolve and that resilience to keep pushing forward. This is hard. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And without resilience, without that sort of inner confidence to keep us going when we have those, those hard days, you know, when we have those no's, 
that you know we've worked hours on a quote and they come back and they're challenging that um and to grow that resilience it's partly experience but a massive chunk of that is self-care are you allocating resources to your self-care and looking after your well-being both physically and mentally do you have a supportive network around you that that can pick you up that can cheerlead you on in those times of need um, and in those on on those wins it's just as important but you know a championing community around you is really essential and actually time for learning and self-development that is very much a resource in itself yes it might not be a tangible one but actually by Investing in ourselves as the, as the wedding business owner can only positively reflect on the outcomes of and success of your wedding business. So I've gone through eight um, building blocks to build up your brand through its purpose. These, and as I mentioned, they all work interdependently and yeah, they're all as equally as important as each other. But I thought the eight really helped sort of clarify it in your brain um, of what we need to be thinking about when we're looking at a brand rather than just a business. Now, I've got a, an activity for you. This activity is going to take you about 60 minutes. So it's, it's a bit more of a time investment, but I really recommend um, taking that time. Um, and it's looking at your brand's current position. So all the content that I've talked to you so far, um, I want you to basically apply it to your own business. And I'm just going to ask you some simple questions. Um, and I want you to grab a notepad and pen or a Google Doc and just note down initially your thoughts to the questions that I'm asking. OK, so number one, question one is around ambitions and desire. So what do you personally want to gain from building your wedding business brand? Number one. Number two, and this is to do with talent. List the skills you have developed um, that will help you build your wedding business brand up to now currently. I then want you to list the areas where you currently have some knowledge gaps and you need to take some time and self-development to fill those gaps and in number two to see if you like i want you to then once you've got those lists revisit um, the gaps list and highlight those that you want to you want to learn personally and then ones that you are able to outsource now if finances are you know still tight and that sort of thing it's just it might not be something that you can do tomorrow for example but by knowing what first few things you are able to outsource, you, it can almost spur you on. So when you are in a position to get some additional help, you know exactly what you need help with and how they can help you um, ASAP sort of thing. Number three is around rational intent. So the three lists that you've created above um, at this moment in time today, whenever you are listening to the, this podcast, I want you to note down on a scale of one to 10, how likely is it for you to address each one of these points, each one of either the knowledge gaps or um, the um, ambitions, sort of, you know, what you need to do to address and um, to achieve that ambition. Number four, values. So, list for me what are your business values you might have these written down somewhere already to dig out and maybe you can update them and tweak them or this might be the first time that you have consciously thought about them so simply what are what are your non-negotiables when when someone works with you or generally as a business what do you want to achieve from a wider context as a wedding business brand Number five is around context. Now I've got a few questions under context. So what wider events or um, might change, um, sorry, what wider events are impacting your business or might well be impacting them in the future? What opportunities does these changes 
um, create for you? And what other factors are taking the attention of your target wedding audience at present? And what can you do within your brand um, to counter this sort of diversion of attention? How can you differentiate yourself more to pull back that attention from other shiny things that your um, ideal wedding clients might be distracted by? Number six is around the creation and imagination building block. If there were no barriers, where would you take your brand? If there were no monetary value um, barriers, um, emotional barriers, if you, you know, you yourself holding yourself back, it's kind of thing, where would you take your wedding business brand? Write it down. Number seven. This is around narrative. What is your brand story? What differentiates you from others within your wedding niche? And that is ultimately you and your story. But get it down on that paper. Um, and if you've already clarified your brand story, where is it present on your co online content? Is it that golden thread that is weaved in throughout your content that you put online? Are people learning about you and what you stand for? The last one, resources. Do you have all of the physical resources you need to build a brand? Have you in place a schedule that enables you to give time to all the elements you need to be, um, sorry. I'll read that one again. Have you in place a schedule that enables you to give time to all of the elements that you need in there to build your wedding business brand, i.e. headspace, i.e. working on your business and that all important self-care? Do you have that written down anywhere and physically in a calendar or time blocked out? Now, I recommend there's quite a lot in this episode. So if you're up for doing the activity, I would, um, what's the word? Rewind. And actually, when you've got a pen and paper in front of you, just stopping it at each question that I noted. Lots of food for thought for you there um, in this episode. And I would love to hear what you took away from today and whether it sparked any sort of light bulb moments or inspiration around how you can improve or build you on um, the brand that you have within your wedding business. Um, I tend to hang out on Instagram. So it's uh, at Wedding Business Growth Coach. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending the last uh, hole in an hour with myself. It has been an absolute pleasure and I will see you on the next episode. Take it steady. Download your free Who Do You Serve activity pack that takes you through the step-by-step -step activities to focus in on your niche and position yourself as the go-to wedding supplier within your specialism. Download it today following the link in the podcast show notes or visit my website weddingbusinessgrowthcoach.com forward slash biz dash resources. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and took away some wedding business building value. Make sure you subscribe to the Wedding Business Growth Coach podcast to ensure you get notified every time a new episode goes live. See you next time.